Welcome to the Greater Culture Podcast, where we have conversations about how to elevate the quality of life through movement, nutrition, recovery, and mindset practices. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Greater Culture Podcast. Your host, Brad Marshall here, and very excited to be joined by Alexis Doherty. She is the owner of Needed Escapes and is a massage therapist uh, here local to Fuquay Verena. So I'm excited to dive into her story, learn a little bit more about how she founded and started Needed Escapes and some of the benefits that we all can derive from massage therapy. So Alexis, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So you are uh, a massage therapist, started Needed Escapes. Tell us a little bit about your story of how did you find yourself getting into the world of massage therapy and how did that lead to eventually opening your own place? So um, back in middle school, I would say probably like 14, 15 years old. Well, it's 14, 15 middle school. I don't even know. I feel like that's like right on the brink of eighth grade, freshman year of high school type thing. So maybe like 12, 13, I was in middle school. That's all I remember. Um, those, do you know those, like, um, you sell a certain amount in your fundraiser and you have like field day. Yeah. And so like not active anymore, but I used to have like a blast with like running around and doing all these things. And so I was on the rock wall and field day and I was propelling back down and the guy wasn't paying attention. I don't know what he was watching, but it wasn't me. And I'm like mid air and he unhooked my harness and I just fell flat on the ground on my back. Wow. But being a child with like adrenaline of like, all right, I just got off of a rock wall and there's bounce house over here and there's snow cones over here. Like I just kept running around and then we went to PE and we were doing like our warm ups of like push ups and sit ups and stuff like that. And I called my coach over and I was like, something's wrong with my back. Like I'm in a lot of pain. And he thought I was just trying to get out of my warm ups. So he's like, you're fine and stood over me and was like, you need to keep going. Like you're just trying to get out of your warm ups. I'm like, that's not me. I used to be the kid in dance class that they were like, do you want to do cool down stretches or 500 ab crunches? And I was like, 500 ab crunches. I was that iconic person everybody hated. Um, but so he stood over me. I was ended up like crying in pain before the warm up was done. And so I ended up just running out of class because he wouldn't let me leave. And I went to the nurse's office and I was like, I am in so much pain. And so she called my mom and they're like, you need to come get her. And I don't know what, I don't know where we were first. I don't know if it was like my PCP or urgent care. But my urgent care doctor, like, sat me on a round swivel chair and told me to, like, hug myself. And he came up behind me and was, like, thrusting, trying to, like, pop my back. He's like, oh, she just needs to be, like, pop. Knowing what I know now about scope of practice, like, I, I would have yelled at numerous different people. But that is behind us now. Um, so we left there and we went to a different doctor. And he was like, the combination of everything, you've nearly broken your back. But we've never done, we never did x-rays. We never did mm -hmm. the work that needed to be put into it to figure out what was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so we just recently found out that I did end up with a pars defect in my low back, likely from the rock wall thing, because uh, it's the only trauma that I've had to my back. Um, but yeah, so all of that, that's the injury to my back. The only relief that I could find when I was so young was massage therapy. So mm -hmm. I thought, if this could provide me this much relief to my low back, I'd like to be able to do the same for others. So do massage. And now I know the whole, like, do chiropractor, do acupuncture, uh, dry needling, physical therapy. Like, now I have a whole arsenal of things that help my back. But massage was the first thing. It was like, I want to help people. I want to do that. Like, they did to me. Yeah, it's so fascinating how we find something or... We experience some pain and you try and find some way to help relieve it or get rid of it. And, and when we go to doctors, their scope of practice sometimes is limited, whereas they'll either refer out or prescribe you medication to just like ease the pain and hopefully you get through it. But knowing that there's all these other providers who can help and assist with that. So what did that process look like then when you started to get some massage therapy to help with some of the pain that you were experiencing in your back? What in regards to like just like the pain release and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So it just, um, I don't know. They just kind of like worked on the muscles around it and helped loosen, and it wouldn't ever go away completely, but it helped me not live in a constant state of pain twenty four seven. Like I was able to get some relief. So they would work on like QL and lats and erectors and all of that would help like loosen all of that. And I was like, oh, I feel like I can actually like move without like being the old young person that's like bent over like an old lady like that hurt so bad. 
What's fascinating too about that is, is thinking about how how young you were when you experienced that. Because a lot of times, I think when we get older and we, you know, get outside of the college or in those younger or later years, all of a sudden you're like, oh man, just getting all these creaks and cracks and pain and things like that. But at a young age to experience that and to go experience a massage, I, I can't say that I've experienced my first massage till probably well after high school. Um, so what was the the frequency after like of that? Oh, okay. It was during high school, but it was one of those of like um, middle school. Like we still, like I was on painkiller for a while and mm. muscle relaxer and I was in a back brace for, it was over a year, but I, I'm, you're in high school and middle school, like you're getting made fun of because you're walking around with a brace on and everyone thinks you're being dramatic. And Yeah, I can only imagine what that experience <laughs> was like. And so that kind of spurred you, it said into, hey, how can I help others to either not experience this or get out of that type of pain? So what did the education and training look like then when you were like, you know what, I am very interested or want to pursue this, this path of massage therapy? So massage school, I went to Wake Tech in um, Raleigh, and their process of like going into the massage program is like you can do your prereqs, but before you actually like enroll in the wait list for the massage program, you have to receive three massages from three licensed professionals at three different places. So I don't know, you went, I went to like, I didn't know this was bad or a bad place to go, but I went to like Massage Envy and Hand in Stone and like one other place. And one was a locally owned person. And so I was like, well, that was the best one because usually that's how it works. And now I know that, but, um, I just, I thought it was all phenomenal. So I was like, I still want to do this. My family's in the background and they're like, you really want to work on like fat, hairy men for a living? And I'm like, no, the way that you phrase that, no, I don't. But now I'm like, it's just a body on the table and they need pain release. Like I, I don't judge people now, but like growing up, that was what they were like whispering in my ear. Um, but it was a two year program. We did um, pre-rec stuff. We did anatomy and physiology. Uh, clinicals. It was, I don't know, you got a massage every day. It was nice. <laughs> so that actually sounds not too bad in terms of going to school and knowing that, hey, when you get to practice and work on somebody, you're going to get a little sense of pain relief along the way. And so you went through the two-year program. And then what does it look like for someone who's starting out then? So now you finish off your schooling, you are officially a massage therapist. What's the process look like for finding work? Because like you said, there's a variety of those chains out there. There's people who start their own practice. People figure out kind of what their niches are. So tell us a little bit about what that journey was like for you fresh out of school. So um, to be completely vulnerable, I struggled with anatomy and physiology in school. And so I, um, you had to have a C or better in the class. And anatomy is really hard for me but also testing, like I have really bad test anxiety and I always have. And the anatomy testing for, um, I guess the anatomy part of the physiology in AFP was you had this model out in front of you and you had to label the part that it was pointed to 100% correctly. Like spelling had to be, you couldn't flip a letter or you got it wrong. Like it was just very difficult. So I did not get the grade that I needed to the first go round. So I had to drop out of the massage therapy, therapy program and re-enroll after. So I had to like, I had to retake anatomy and physiology and then restart the massage program over. And so because it happened that way, I was in a massage class with somebody else who ended up opening our own business. And she was like, listen, we both are a Duke way. Like, why don't you come work for me? You'll be an independent contractor. But to not just throw all my eggs in one basket, I was like, I'll still interview at a chain because usually they have better benefits, all that. So I interviewed at Massage Envy, and I won't say which location, but um, she, I sat down in the interview room, which I guess was like just a main, I don't know if it was like their break room, but there was just a lot of like foot traffic during the interview. And um, she was like, yeah, we don't yell at our staff. We treat everybody great. You're paid great. And I was like, great. And then front desk walks in and they're like, hey, we have a question. And she just started screaming at them. And I was like, you just said that you don't yell at them. But you're, you, you just yelled at them. And I was very confused. And then she was like, all right, well, I'm going to send you back with the lead therapist. She's going to give you like a grand tour of everything. And the therapist brought me in the room and she shut the door and she was like, run fast. You do not want to work in a place like this. And I was just, I, I left. And I was like, I don't know what's going on here. Like, they're telling me they don't yell at people and then they yell at people. And then the lead therapist brings me in a room, shuts the door, tells me to run. 
like, I'm going to run. So I left and I ended up taking the position um, with the lady that I was originally in massage school with. And I worked there for six years and it just didn't, it didn't work out towards the end. So I opened Needed Escapes. It's amazing how many times we hear that similar story of somebody gets into the work field and, you know, they, they're searching for a place where they vibe with the culture and they like what the people are about and they like what their mission is, what they care about. And, and when there's a disconnect there, like, Hey, I just know this place isn't for me or they don't operate the same way that I'd like to operate that we go searching for something else that works for us. So as you're cutting your teeth, kind of as a, a young massage therapist, help me understand how you go about learning all the different styles and techniques because i think for a lot of us like myself included like when i look at a massage they're uh, looking to get a massage there's so many options that's like deep tissue Wait. swedish and then you start looking at like thai and all these other things and it's like there's a lot going on here so help yeah. us understand a little bit about a how you learn different techniques and what some of the different mas massage styles are like because i think it can be sometimes tough for folks to know like what should I look for? What should I actually get? Yeah, it's a common thing. And um, that's kind of why we as Needed Escapes clustered into the therapeutic for the most part, so that you don't have to play that guessing game of like, oh, I, I, I might need trigger point or I might need sports massage because I'm athletic or I might need deep tissue. Like 98% of the time, you guys have no idea what you want. So we try to take it, make it easy and just say therapeutic. Um, so the easy stuff that we could cluster in there, we cluster in there, but as far as learning it, like receiving massage from other people teaches you a lot and you can kind of pick up on like, oh, I really liked the way that she did that. And sometimes like if you're cool enough with them, like, what is that? Like, what did you just do? Because that felt great. Um, and if they tell you like the technique, like you can go and look for a continued education course and that specific technique. Or um, I talk a lot with a lot of other massage therapists and they'll be like, Listen, I did Thai massage, and Thai massage is great on the therapist's body. Clients are raving about it. So I'm like, I'll go get certified in Thai. Check it out. And if you take one class and you love it, like, you keep going. So, like, I am a Thai master massage therapist. But as soon as I finished my master course, I was like, I don't think I like this anymore. And I stopped it because, I don't know, I think after you do it for a little while, it's like, okay, this is for me or this isn't for me. And I'm not going to continue offering things that I'm not enjoying because, then my passion's not behind it. You're not getting the same benefits out of it. Um, but yeah, so I just, you kind of research and figure out, like I found something recently that um, was a course and I can't remember the details on it, but it was something about like, this is a new way that you can help people relieve pain if it, if you're not finding it in the direct area. Like it, it, there's, I can't remember the wording on it, but it was something about like, you start to like ask them questions and you kind of play with their mind and it ends up getting the muscle to release. Um, hmm. It's going to kill me that I can't figure it out now. But um, I have a client that I immediately thought was like, this would benefit him. I should get certified in this. So that's just kind of what I do. Um, I should dig for continuing education courses. Yeah. So it sounds like it's a lot of the onus is on the therapists themselves to figure out what particular style they align with having a variety of tools in your toolkit, depending on who's on the table and what they're looking for and what can be most helpful for them. Um, I'd be curious, what are some of the, the general sort of practices or styles you learn in massage school? Like when you're coming out, are you pretty well versed in a variety of like, whether it's therapeutic or sports or deep tissue that like right out the gate, you can offer that. And then if you want to get more nuanced with, like you said, tie or these other practices like you have to go kind of explore that on your own so every school we've learned over the years just based off of like who i've worked with at the other place that i worked at or the girls that i have on staff here like if you went to a different school than i did your base massage therapy program was completely different hmm. so like i learned swedish relaxation deep tissue trigger point sports massage cupping um hot stones and then we dabbled into like um, Reiki, which I hated. I thought it was like that foo-foo, didn't work. Um, we did Ayurveda, which I thought I'm a very anti-massage, I'm an anti-oil massage therapist. I will not use oil on people. I hate the way that it feels. I hate the way that it makes you feel after a massage. 
and that's all Ayurveda is. It's just an excessive amount of oil. Um, but like you dabble in like some small things and then it's not technically to say that you learned it, but just to say like, hey, we dabbled in this. And if you're interested, now you know you can go take a course after massage. Um, but like I had, we had a pregnant um, classmate. And so like we learned a little bit, but they're like, by no means are any of you certified prenatal massage. Like you can't run out of school and say like you learned prenatal in school. But then I had a colleague who she did learn prenatal in school. But she's like, I still don't feel well versed in it. And they say that I can do it. So she still went and did a prenatal course. So it's just kind of like, but for the most part, you learn like Swedish, deep tissue, trigger point, um, and sports, I think is kind of across the board neutral. Um, and then other schools throw in random stuff. Yeah, that's kind of fascinating to hear what you come out of school with and what you feel prepared to be able to work on with folks and then what you want to go explore and, and get deeper into. Um, cause like I said, I, and I think a lot of folks experience that as well as you can look at a menu and be like, I don't know. I just know my back is sore, my hamstring or something. My shoulder's not feeling great. And I'm not sure exactly what's going to be helpful, but let's, let's see if like the therapist can help with that. So when you think about this idea of a therapeutic massage, what is sort of, how would you frame that or how would you describe that to somebody if they're like, you know what, I just know I'm a little sore. I know I'm experiencing maybe a little bit of pain. I'm going to go with this therapeutic massage. What can they expect or what would you say is kind of like the description for that? So I tell people therapeutic massage is anything that your tissues need. So it could be deep tissue. It could be trigger point. It could be relaxation, whatever it needs to be. We determine that by putting our hands on you. So if you come in here and you're like, my shoulder hurts, but I don't know what's going on. I don't know what it needs. Let me figure that out. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to figure out if it's, it doesn't need deep tissue. Does it need trigger point? Does it just need to be stretched a little bit? Do I need to, if it is it not massage at all and I need to send you to the chiropractor or the physical therapist or something, um, we just kind of roll with that. But I just tell people like, let us figure that out. If you want something more on the therapeutic side, because you have an injury or you hurt yourself, something like anything. I love that that idea that, yeah, I love that idea of like, let the expert figure it out because uh, as a coach, it's so, it's funny to me how many times people come to us and they're like, Oh, I know exactly what's hurt or injured. And you're like, do you really like, is that exactly what's going on? And then you, you know, work into it or you, you're having a back and forth and you're like, I don't think what's injured is what you think it is. And so I think sometimes leaving up to the expert can be really helpful. So I'd love to get a sense of, you know, let's say somebody comes in for something going on in their shoulder, walk us through like for you, how you go about figuring out what's going on with hands-on and just kind of walk us through what that process is like. Cause I think it's kind of fascinating to be like, Hey, let me go find and see what's going on and then make a determination based on that. So if somebody comes in and they're like, my shoulder hurts, I don't know. It just, it hurts on certain movements, that kind of thing. I'll work, I'll start with, I mean, I, I have a routine of like the, the direction that I move. Um, but I'll, I'll typically check first where they're immediately complaining of. So if they're like kind of pointing to like rhomboids hurt, like I'll poke around at rhomboids and I'm like, it's not your rhomboids. Like then I might go over to um, infraspinatus and teres minor, or I might go up to like levator and I'll just keep kind of poking around and I'll feel like adhesions in the tissue and knots and trigger points. And sometimes on the table, they're like, that's it. That that's what hurts. And then other times they're like, I still don't think you're hitting it. Like I, I still feel it. We'll just kind of like keep kind of chasing around the, the circle of the shoulder and try to find it. That's really fascinating to hear that idea of like lesions and knots, because I think that's how most of us think. And most of us experience pain or discomfort is just like, I don't know, it just feels tight or like, it feels like there's a knot there. It feels like something's going on. And a lot of times yeah. we'll try and find a way to release that ourselves, especially athletes. You know, it's like, let me foam roll it. Let me put a little cross ball there. Let me try some of like the massage guns or tools or things like that. Um, so when you start to think about or work with folks like that, what are some of the ways that you like to encourage them? Cause obviously massage is a great way to get an expert in there to deal with that and work on that. But when you start to hear all these like foam rolling and the cross balls and massage guns, what sort of place do those have in helping somebody stay healthy or helping some of the pain or discomfort maybe they're feeling from their workouts? I'm on board with it for the most part. And I only say that because I took a lacrosse ball thinking, again, like massage therapists know 
all the things. You don't. I'm not a doctor. Um, but I took a lacrosse ball to my infraspinatus attachment and irritated the crap out of it. And it, it still, like, kills me to this day. And, like, I'm in PT for it and the chiropractor messes with it. But, um, yeah, so, like, sometimes, like, I'm, like, within reason, take a lacrosse ball to it, foam roll, keep things nice and loose. But don't aggravate it because you might end up causing injury to it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Do you like to think of it on like a pain scale, mm -hmm. like zero to 10? Because I think for some people they're like, oh, I just need to dig in harder on this thing. And like, it might be screaming at me, but like, I'm going to figure out a way to loosen it up or, or release, you know, some of that tension. When you start thinking about, Hey, if you're going to do some foam rolling, or you're going to move around on a lacrosse ball, is there a certain like pain threshold that you're like, Hey, keep it under this. If you start to experience, you know, those sharp shooting pains, or if it's getting to a certain threshold, like we're probably doing more damage than good at that point in time. I don't with like foam rolling and lacrosse ball. Cause usually at least for most of my clients, they hate doing it to begin with. Mm -hmm. They're just trying mm -hmm. to get them to do it to start with is hard. But, um, like for the massage table itself, like some people are like, oh, I can, I can handle it. Like I'm flinching, but like, I'm okay. And I tell people with that, like, if you're holding your breath, it's too much at that point, we can't be causing damage. Like I need to back out. You need to communicate. Mm -hmm. Um, but you could use that as like kind of a guide of if you're holding your breath, because rolling out vastus lateralis is absolutely killing you. Um, yeah, you might want to stop. <laughs> yeah, I know. I certainly know there's a few spots on the body, like anything like in the lat side body, you know, anything we start getting in like the trap near the neck <laughs> and the shoulder or even like the quads. It's just like those are going to scream regardless of how much pressure you put on them, it seems like. So there's certainly some areas yeah. that have a little bit more sensitivity than others, I feel like, when it comes to some of those practices. Yeah, I am like super notorious. Like I'll get down on like tibialis anterior and I'll start to foam roll. Now they, I'm good. I changed yeah. my mind. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'll leave that to the expert to figure that out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm also, I'm, so I'm really curious too uh, about the process it, that it took when you wanted to start your own practice. So you ventured out of uh, massage therapy school, got a chance to work for six years, kind of cut your teeth, learn a little bit more about how to work on people and, and whatnot. And then talk us through the process of starting your own business. Cause I think for a lot of folks out there, that is a, a scary moment that takes a little bit of courage and a little bit of trust. And so walk us through what that process was like of how you decided to, and what it looked like to start your own business. Things were not going well. Ultimately, I would say my clients were not being treated the way that I wanted them to be treated anymore. And they were coming forward to me about it. And they're like, Alexis, I really don't like the way that this business is shifting towards. Um, I don't like the way that they're handling things. I don't like the way that they're treating me. And ultimately, I had been told, like, your hands are out of it. It's not really up to you. Um, basically, your clients can get over it. And I didn't like the fact that that's what I was being told. And my clients were coming to me with a complaint, like, I'm trying to tell you what to improve on. And it wasn't getting improved, um, for lack of better words. And so, um, I don't know, ultimately the people, my clients that gave me the ultimatum of either they change this or I don't come here anymore. And I was like, I, I can't make my reputation go down because of where this is shifting. Um, and my family had been yelling at me for years, like, do you realize what you're making for her like do you it, it's a lot of money that you're leaving on the table um and I did a lot of my work myself like I did my marketing myself like basically my family had been telling me you're doing all of the work that you need to for a small business anyways why not just go out on your own mm -hmm. and it was the same thing it was terrifying like, I'm like I, I really don't want to like I'm comfortable I I know that I have my clients here like what if people can't find me? Like I get worried about all of that, but again, because I was doing all of my own marketing, the likelihood of people not being able to find me was pretty slim to none. Um, and so yeah, I, um, I got hounded a lot by my family and things were starting to, um, there was, there were a lot of tears towards the end of like, I can't, I can't take this anymore. It's getting kind of toxic. I need to get out. Um, and things were just getting really bad to the point of, reputation was kind of starting to get questionable. Um, and so I was like, all right, I'm out. I think I'm going to go open my own business. And then, um, things got worse with my back and I was like, all right, 
my spinal doctor was like, you're probably at risk for needing back surgery. Um, you're too young for back surgery, but it is something that is in your future. And of course, like I've got my massage, my chiro and PT that we're trying to keep this did not happen, but I can't think of doing anything else other than massage therapy. So I don't want to give up massage. I don't want to give up the business. And so instead of risking that at some point down the road, I was like, let me bring on some people, treat them well, the way that I would want to be treated and grow the business. And that way we have that final financial protection of if and when spinal surgery does happen for me, we've got other people here. They can take care of my clients if until I can come back and kind of roll with that. But it is, it's terrifying. Yeah. It's amazing how, it's amazing how sometimes it, it requires, or it takes, I guess, not only encouragement from friends and family of like giving you the confidence that, Hey, you can do this, but also right. sometimes it takes the push of the place you're at of, you know what, I'm not happy with the way things are going, or this is just maybe my, my cue, my indication of like, Hey, let's, let's try something on our own. So it was a, a combination of all those things. Like, all right, not happy necessarily with where I'm at friends and family, giving me the confidence to step out and then having a client base too probably helped a lot of like, okay, I know if I work or step out on my own, there's going to be some clients who are going to come with me, stick with me and give me some of that confidence. And Hopefully. yeah. And so when you had, when you began that process, um, how did you come up with the name and the concept and all of that stuff when you were like, you know what, I want my own brand and I want my own company and things like that. Um, how did you come up with all of that? Uh, again, with the the situation that I was leaving from, we kind of joked that I needed an escape. Um, mm. I needed to where I was at um, as part of the punny side of it. But then also, like, my clients, I, I like to stick elbows to people, and they like to squirm. And so, jokingly, like, I work on people, and they try to, like, escape off my table because they're like, oh, this this hurts, like back out a little bit kind of deal. And so there was, there was multiple different parts of needed escapes, but we had pondered on it for a while. Um, and when I finally got to the breaking point, I was like, I, I still really like needed escapes. Like it's kind of stuck with me. Um, we had come up with several different things. We even got chat GPT involved mm. in AI. Like we were like, Hey, give us some business names, but um, didn't ultimately like anything that they were coming up with. But my family gave us, a few different spinoffs. I think one person said like needed escape. And I was like, that just sounds like it's ending very like abrupt. And then I was like, what about needed escapes? Like it still doesn't sound right, but it sounds better. And then it just grew on me. I, I love, uh, cause I, I love the, the punniness of it too, of just like all the different, you know, context for it of like needed. We've got the massage going in there. Everybody's looking for a, an escape when they go to see a massage therapist. Usually it's, it's you know, therapeutic, relaxing, or they're trying to escape some pain or things like that. So I love the name and I love uh, the concept from it. And it's funny too, that there's also the need and escape from where you were at. And so you found the name, you're all right, we're going to do this. We're going out on our own. What were some of the, the next steps then? Did you say, Hey, we're going to do it out of the home. Did you go right away and find a commercial space that you could treat out of? Because there's so many practitioners now uh, in a variety of fields that can go to home-based care where they're going to travel to you or do it out of their own home now. So what did that process look for you as a new small business owner? Um, ultimately, because we want a family, um, the only space that I have in my house, you would pretty much have to walk through my entire house to get to the treatment room. And we didn't like the fact, numerous different things. We didn't like the fact that anyone off the streets almost would be learning my entire layout of my home. Um, we didn't love that. And then also, um, I have a lot of clients that don't understand boundaries. And so we feared that like somebody would text me and say, um, like, Hey, I see your home. Can, can I have a massage right now? And that, just, I mean, I've had that personally happen. Um, we had an unexpected death in the family and I, um, I don't know, my mind wasn't in the right presence and I immediately drove up to Pennsylvania. And the day before I was supposed to start working again, realized I'm not even in the right state and I'm not going to be at work tomorrow. So I started texting clients and I was like, I'm really sorry. I had a death in the family. Like I need to cancel this week. I don't know when I'm going to return because nothing had been planned. Um, and somebody kind of lost it. It was like, I'm sorry about your loss, but I really needed a massage. 
and it has stuck with me the way that she treated me during that whole process. But um, the creepy part was I had pulled back into my driveway and she had been texting me the entire week that I was gone. Just kept pushing. Like, I really needed a massage. Like, when are you coming back? Like, you need to be working days, like pretty much every single day in a row until you're caught up with everybody that you canceled. Um, Just pushing the boundaries big time. But the final one for me was I pulled in my driveway and not even 10 minutes later, she texted me and said, I know you're home. When can you fit me in? Mm. And that was just, that creeped me out. Like, I was just like, I, I can't, like, I cut ties with her and she, she of course, it didn't end well. But, um, yeah, I just thinking about doing home stuff at my personal home, just, I don't know, I can't, that scares me. Um mm-hmm that didn't work um but i toured like a bunch of different crossfit gyms like i reached out to people and i was like do you have an extra room for massage and knowing that you guys drop weights and stuff like i knew it was gonna Mm -hmm. be loud but i'm like for me to get out that's fine um but i ended up in a a chiropractic um a pediatric chiropractor's office just on day one like that was where i went so i started there and then this new office was taking too long so i had to leave there because my lease was up and go to a temporary office. So I bounced around a little bit, but now we're here for 10, or 10 years. It's uh, it's funny how all of those experiences as like a small business owner, it's just like problem after problem of like just figuring out how to solve it. It's like, okay, I can do the work and I've got clients and we can get that figured out. But it's like all the other stuff that comes up that seems to get in the way. Uh, as someone who ran a, ran a business out of the house for a year, I can 100% vouch for you know, you start to blur the lines between like personal and business and like you're bringing clients over and then like, oh, we just hang out and we stick around or like, when can we come over and use the gym? And you're like, well, the gym's also my house and I'd like to, you know, have times for myself. Same with, with you where it's all of a sudden, yeah, now a new person signs up and you don't know anything about them, but they're going to come to your house or whatnot. So I think it is a, if it's possible, great opportunity to move in with somebody else, lease a room, like you said. And so talk us through that initial phase of, all right, you found yourself a room, you're now in this pediatric uh, office, and were things just starting to move kind of smoothly there? Or what was that process like as uh, as you settled in? Um, it was a shock for my clients because we had always been in an office that um, it wasn't like a situation like you've been at Needed Escapes now, mm-hmm. like you didn't walk in the door and it's just the massage business, like where I was at for six years, you walked in the door and you went down this hall and around another corner and there was all these other businesses in there, but they were all quiet. So what my clients were used to was like, all you heard was like the chatter in the massage lobby kind of deal. And so when I moved to Holly Springs, most of my complaints were like, they're screaming children next door because she's a pediatric chiropractor. And um, there was also a gym in the lobby. So like you would be coming out of a massage And my massages aren't, like, I don't do Swedish relaxation. They're still therapeutic. Like, you're not falling asleep snoring on the table most of the time. Um, But you still leave, like, relaxed and feeling good. And people would, like, come out of the massage room and you hear, like, squat water. And everybody was just like, this isn't the environment that I want to be leaving from. Um, So, I mean, we kind of had issues with that. But Mm -hmm. it wasn't something that I went to either of them and complained about because there was nothing that could be done, like. It's just the environment that I find a lease in. Um, so we had those quirks. <laughs> you've got you've got some great stories that I'm sure will will stick with you. Of like, hey, remember when? And you can get to to relive some of those moments. And like you said, though, now in a space that is here in Fuquay, in, in a really awesome, beautiful space that you got to set up and design and help um, really get it going the way that you'd like. Um, so what are some of the things that you really like about the space that you're in now that you've got a chance to set up and make your own? Now that we're here, like we really enjoy, um, I would say like I, one, I enjoy, like we have our own entrance. So the fact that like the people that are coming in the door are just for us. So I don't have to worry about like, Oh, what business are you here to see? Oh, okay. They'll be right with you. Like sometimes like if you have no idea who like your new clients walking in the door and you've got eight other businesses in the same space as you, like, are you here to see me? I don't like, I don't want to say your name because I could get in trouble for that. But like, I don't know. It's just, it's nice that we're here by ourselves now. Um, We really like the laundry room. The fact that I don't have to take sheets home and wash them. I just wash them here. Like we have a load that I started an hour ago and it'll be done before I leave today. So 
like I don't have to be doing laundry until 11 o'clock at night like I used to. It's funny how it's the, it's the small things, you know, where it's like, hey, we've got a space that is tranquil and peaceful when people walk in. We've got two treatment rooms. We've got, you know, the office for you and the staff. And then, like, all those other amenities that you don't realize until you are in a different space. And you're like, I really wish we had X, Y, or Z. So it's really awesome to be set up for success for the foreseeable future now. So tell us a little bit about the, the current state of Need Escapes in terms of your therapist who you've got working with you and just kind of where you or how you're operating right now and how you help treat people in the Fuquay Verena area. So right now we've got two treatment rooms. So typically speaking, like I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then half days on Friday. And then Emily works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So her and I are here together. Um, I'm in this room and then she's in the, the front room. Um, and then Jennifer is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So one of our rooms are utilized seven days a week. So there's somebody here constantly. Um, we're just constantly cranking out massages um, or trying to. Both of the girls, I don't know, they do at least 20 hours every two weeks. Oh, that's so. awesome. And talk us through uh, <laughs> what a client can expect. So if somebody's brand new and they're looking and they schedule something with you, walk us through what that process looks like for somebody brand new scheduling and then coming to their visit with you. So we tell all new clients to book an appointment online. Um, and when they come in, you just have a seat. We wait wait to be greeted. Um, if you've done your paperwork before you come in, great. If not, we'll give you a tablet, let you fill it out. Um, once we are done going over your intake forms by ourselves, then we'll come up here and like, we'll grab you. We'll bring you in a room so that you're not out in the open discussing your health. Um, but once you're in the treatment room, we ask how you're feeling, what you want to work on today. Um, some people, it's like, I just want to work on back, neck, shoulders. Like, I again, I did something to my shoulder. I don't know what's going on. Like, occasionally I'll talk them into, like, let's let's hit, like, glutes. Because if you're complaining about low back, like, it could be pulling from glutes. It could be pulling from hams. And some people are like, I didn't shave my legs. I don't want hams today. We just roll with it. But, um, yeah, we just, it's fully customized to you. So if you don't want something, we don't do it. If I can talk you into something that I think will benefit you, great. Some people they need to think about it. Like I don't, I don't know about glute work. That doesn't make that doesn't sound comfortable. But sometimes they just need it. Yeah, and I, I can speak from experience that uh, from signing up for the session to getting there, getting greeted, the whole nine. Really, really smooth, awesome process. Uh, it's funny if if for anyone who's experience a, a sports massage where, you know, you might be in a public place and you've got somebody working on you and it's great and it can help to relieve some of those muscle tensions. Um, this is going to be a, a more therapeutic experience where you're going to have the table with the linens and everything like that and working through a more tranquil environment, nice, calm, peaceful um, room that you're in as everybody's working through the massage then of whatever needs to get worked on. So it's funny how there's the, there's the balance of like, it's a peaceful, tranquil room. But then as soon as those elbows start finding the nooks and crannies and the muscles that need help, you're like, you're, you're, you're holding it in a little bit, but like, breathe, just breathe, just breathe. Got this. <laughs> yeah. So it's an awesome space. Highly recommend folks check it out. And so for anybody who's interested in learning more about Needed Escapes, um, following you, what's the best way that folks can contact you or reach out? So if you want to reach out directly, you can call our cell phone number. Um, it's 919-705-0266, or you can go to the website. Um, the website's the easiest way for new clients to book an appointment, but also like you can see our up to the minute availability on scheduling. So, um, you can see if we have same day stuff, if we have next day stuff. Yeah, there's there's online booking, there's pricing, there's services, because we go beyond just therapeutic. We've got prenatal and hot hip laying and CBD massage. The list is, I don't want to say it's endless, but it, it's quite lengthy. Um, but yeah, the website, neededescapes.com, or you can reach out via phone call or text message. Thank you. Yeah, highly recommend uh, giving them a follow on social media, reaching out, getting a massage. The first one, they get $10 off the first treatment, which is also a nice perk of checking out the variety of options. They've got 30, the 60, the 90-minute options. So depending on what the availability is and, and who can help, 
Um, there's so many different options. So super excited uh, that you're here in Fuquay Verena and happy to uh, have the opportunity to connect and, and learn a little bit more about your business and how you've been helping support folks in the area here. So, you know, Alexis, thanks so much for taking some time to hop on the podcast today and tell us a little bit more about yourself and the work that you're doing and uh, seeing how Needed Escapes can grow moving forward.